our next speaker, uh, Nicole Foster, who is the head of Amazon Web Services Global AI, AI Policy and head of uh, Canada Public Policy. Um, she's going to talk about how policymakers can mitig mitigate risk without stifling innovation as they look to regulate artificial intelligence. So welcome, Nicole. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I think most of you probably are somewhat, since this is the tech forum, I'm assuming people are a little bit familiar with AWS. But we have over 200 cloud services, such as compute, storage, databases, as well as emerging technology like artificial intelligence and machine learning. And when we hear the term AI, we tend to think of really kind of exciting things like driverless cars and drones. And while these are really important um, and exciting applications of AI, it doesn't tell the whole story of just how AI is driving innovation in virtually every vertical of the economy and industrial sector. So from finance to farming, AWS works with customers uh, to help them leverage the power of the cloud and AI to realize the benefits of this transformation. And I'd like to just share a couple of um, sort of interesting examples of how um, AI is doing that. Um, we don't often think of AI in the agricultural sector, but with a global population expected to reach 10 billion by 2050, we will need to double the output of, agri of the agricultural sector to meet this increased demand. So farming is already taking up about 40% of the world's land, and so avoiding global famine will require us to make better uses of existing farmland today and making it more productive. There's a company called One Soil that is doing just that. They're using AI to address this challenge by creating tools that help farmers increase crop yields while reducing their environmental waste. So they're doing this by analyzing data from satellite imagery and in-ground sensors to help farmers assess soil conditions and future weather patterns to make more informed decisions on which crops to grow and how best to care for them. And one soil is being used by over 200,000 farmers um, in 59 countries. They've analyzed over 7 million fields in the US and Europe, leading to already a 20% improvement in farmers' resource optimization. AI is also helping to facilitate the transition to a green energy future. So one of the biggest impediments to the adoption of renewable energy is uh, effectively managing mixed use grids. So while grids are really kind of um, well understanding the kind of fluctuations in demand, it's really hard for uh, renewable energy to protect, predict fluctuations in su supply since we can't control when the wind blows and when the sun shines. So Octopus Energy is a company that is using AI to help overcome some of these challenges. They provide renewable electricity to businesses in over 2 million households um, and businesses in the UK. And they use da data analytics to offer transparent pricing to their customers and tailored electricity tariffs to help lock down energy bills. Super important in what's happening today in terms of energy price fluctuations and demand. Um, so they help their customers manage their energy use. So the service is really built around a platform that tracks personalized energy consumption habits through smart meters and homes. And this really allows um, customers to gain that insight to sort of best decide when it's going to be most cost effective for them to charge their electric vehicles or to run the laundry um, when, the, when the grid is going to be cleaner and both cheaper for them. So these are just two examples of how very like day-to-day -day practical examples of how AI is really um, impacting and changing innovation in the world. Um, and in addition to solving some of these really, um, I think, exciting challenges of renewable energy and climate change or feeding the world, there's also AI happening in businesses of all sizes to leverage data to improve their operations. And while it's still early days, uh, the exciting forecasts are that AI-driven productivity growth could increase global GDP by 16% by 2030. We have over 100,000 customers, um, AWS customers today, that are using that have used AI and machine learning on our platform. And these are organizations across industries and geographies. They include the American NFL, NASCAR, dating apps like Tinder or health and life sciences companies like Vera and Novartis, um, or ride-sharing apps like Lyft. 
And a key factor in why these advances are progressing so quickly is really the advances facilitated by cloud. And in light of a shortage of tech skills that we have around the world, cloud is really a strategic advantage. It's democratizing access to AI by putting AI in the hands of everyday developers. It means that organizations with just IT support can actually leverage AI without direct access to AI and ML experts. That means easier access to these tools, and it also means that these capabilities aren't just in the hands of large corporations or governments, they can actually be in the hands of small businesses and startups. We are also offering machine learning education by making our own machine learning university courses available to everyone. So it's exciting to, to sort of understand that this is now becoming a much more accessible technology. And we're, uh, while we're really excited about uh, how this uh, innovation is changing the world and progressing, uh, progressing how we live and work, we're also very keenly aware of the challenges and risks of this technology. AI is now involved in potentially a lot of life-altering uh, decisions for many of us, whether it's access to credit or access to employment. Banks are now using AI to, to, for um, you know, really incredible ways of uh, fraudulent, detecting fraudulent transactions, improving financial forecasting, and even making loan decisions. Employers are using AI to, to help them identify, recruit, and hire qualified personnel. So these are just two examples where there's potentially really life-impacting decisions being made, but there are many others as well. And there's an enormous public interest in ensuring that AI systems that are being developed are also being deployed responsibly. We take this very seriously. We're very committed at AWS to putting responsible AI into practice, and we are spurring research and development and continued education in this area. We are constantly innovating and iterating. We continue to improve, refine, and expand our approach to responsible AI. It's an active area of research. We um, and we are working to advance the science behind it with a $20 million investment in the National Science Foundation for Fairness in AI, and then also through strategic partnerships with academia. We also work directly with companies and customers to transform responsible AI principles into practice. We focus on helping customers entangle the complex questions that surround fairness, explainability, robustness, security, privacy, and governance. We provide the tools, guidance, and resources that customers need to get started to implement and, uh, and responsible AI across their organization with not only hands-on support, but purpose-built services. We continue to build and invest in new services that meet the demands of customers to make it easier for them to identify and mitigate bias, improve explainability, and help them keep data private and secure. This work is fundamental to the trust in this emerging technology. But there's also a role for governments to play. And over the past few years, we've seen governments um, in the US at the national, subnational level, but also around the world, really starting to take a look at how they can better regulate um, AI. And this is a complicated tension for policymakers who both want their economies to take advantage of the incredible opportunity that the technology offers, but also really protect citizens to ensure their safety. Um, so uh, we are, like I said, we are well aware of, of the need for these, these policies. And my very, very humbling role <laughs> is to try to sort of start to think about how policy and technology can interact in a way, um, and to do it at scale in a way that isn't gonna hinder innovation. So I just wanna sit, share a few considerations um, that might be helpful to policymakers as we kind of continue this work and discussion. First, I just wanna reassure everybody, it's not the wild, wild west. There are lots of laws and regulations that already govern the use of this technology. And so as a fun founding principle, the same, the same laws um, that would govern an automated decision or AI should be the same types of laws that govern, the, govern those decisions if they were being made by a human. The second consideration is that is really to sort of appreciate the understanding that responsible AI is extremely use case specific. When you're talking about farming practices or renewable energy um, or uh, industrial practices, 
you're going to need very different considerations in how you are implementing a responsible use case. So legislative initiatives need to really appreciate that full range of use of, of the technology and really kind of an appreciation that a one size fits all approach is really not gonna be that effective. And so that's my sort of third consideration is that we would like policies to really focus on those higher risk use cases or high impact use cases because we know that the regulation will be far more effective when it actually targets the specific use cases that we know are high risk use of this technology. And the European Commission is actually well on their way to that kind of approach. While we do have some thoughts about how that that um, uh, the EU AI could be improved is absolutely taking a, um, the right approach in terms of looking at those higher risk use cases that may pose a risk to fundamental rights. The fourth consideration is just an understanding of the complexity of the value chain that happens in AI systems. It is a, sing a single system often involves multiple developers, vendors, and deployers. And so when we consider uh, responsibility from a regulatory perspective is make sure that we're actually putting those obligations on the part of the value chain that is best positioned to identify and mitigate potential harms that could arise from the use of that system. And finally, especially for this room um, and the Meridian Institute, is the really the consideration of the importance of global cooperation as we regulate AI. Um, it is going to be critical. There, the global nature of technology ecosystems means that our goal is striking a balance between responsible innovation um, and in this context really means that we need a, a high degree of international cooperation. At the institutional level, we have the OECD, the Global Partnership on AI, the, e, the US-EU uh, Trade and Technology Council, and these are vital institutions to the development of shared norms and mutual understanding about how to craft effective and interoperable AI policies. At the technical level, there's also um, really important work happening in terms of global standard setting organizations such as ISO and IEEE, um, who are effectively developing standards that will hopefully serve as the glue that maintains alignment between the many domestic regulatory requirements that will emerge in the years ahead. And finally, I just want to say that this work is extremely humbling and exciting um, to be really working on both new technology and new policy um, is a very challenging experience. And I look forward to continuing the conversation with many of you in this room about how we are going to be able to put responsible AI into practice. Thank you so much for having me.